This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 32,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. Hey, I have no idea what just happened, but thankfully I was here. This, the ceiling just started flooding water all over my desk. This, if I wasn't here, was seconds away from being absolutely ruined. Everything is completely soaking wet. There's probably a gallon or two of water that just came pouring from the ceiling. I, like, how, how is this studio so fucking bad? To say that my studio and I have had a complicated relationship these past few years would be an understatement. You see, from the very day that I moved into this studio, it has been a battle between chaos and creativity, clutter and cleanliness. What you see in front of the camera versus what's taking place behind the camera. <laughs> it's awful. Okay, let's jump into the edit now. Almost six months ago now, I hired my friend Dave as a part-time producer slash all-around helping hand. And not only is Dave a super talented filmmaker with a great eye for lighting, composition, <laughs> color correction, uh, he also has one thing that the rest of us uh, lack pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, over here. This way. This is a game called, what the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's something that's been 3D printed. And, and we need it. It's not mine. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry organizational skills. And so in late October, Dave decided that it was time for us to overhaul the studio so that it can be a space that's not only functional, but actually inspires us to make videos. And maybe more importantly, um, enables us to stay organized. We picked up a few bins for organization, a new table to put the coffee bar in, and a chair, just because I wanted a, a chair. I like that chair. I was hoping to figure out a larger shelving unit that would work both as a functional storage as well as a little bit of a, a YouTube set, you know, a pretty corner to point the camera. And honestly, it felt really, really good. Well, okay, that part didn't feel so great. my head. It fits. Oh my gosh, it fits. <laughs> do you remember this thing? When people did the... Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, that looks so good. AstroTurf's gone, record player's gone, new kitchen, I bought a giant, uh... I ended up finding a shelving unit that worked really well for the space at one of those online retailers, Wayfair. It was called Wayfair where I got it. And after getting these new little areas set up in the studio, I was surprised actually at how quickly people started noticing the differences. We were getting a lot of comments in my YouTube videos saying like, whoa, that's, you, it's clean. Like you, the, the space is clean. What happened? And I'll be honest, that, that felt really good. Even though the studio space is looking pretty good. As you can see, we've got like a, the kitchen redone. We've got some storage that functions as a bit of a backdrop. Dave is here. Let's turn this around. We got some C-stand storage. Florence is back in the studio. Hello, Florence. Hi. Hi, nice to see you. You might think, wow, the studio is looking great. You'd be wrong. We, uh, we kind of just shoveled all the chaos um, here into Kristoff's area because, because Kristoff's been gone for a really long time. And uh, well, he comes back today, so sorry. But not even two weeks into the process of reorganizing the studio, we got this email from the building owner where we work out of. Kristoff, it has been wonderful having you and your team as tenants here at the Cotton Factory. I wish you the best of luck with your new building. Please be aware that we are not able to extend your lease beyond the end of January 31st, 2022. It has been leased starting February 1st, 2022. Please plan your move accordingly. Sweet. <laughs> we got evicted, so. Yeah, it, we don't get to be here anymore. 
So, see you later. Studio. And honestly, like, I was shocked. I think I knew for a long time that they probably would want us out of the building. But what I didn't expect for them to do was to send us an email out of the blue just saying, hey, sorry, uh, bye bye now. We've rented your space out to someone else. I just thought they would, I don't know, like, ask if we wanted to pay more because, because we would have. And so with a little over two months notice, we now have to pack up all of our gear and find somewhere else to work. And also Kristoff is going to be gone for the next month. So it's, it's bad. Going through this process of organizing and reorganizing and now packing and eventually moving all of our equipment has been just such a reminder of how important it is to take care of that equipment and more importantly, to make sure that you are taken care of in the event of a worst case scenario. And this is one of the places that today's sponsor, Professional Photographers of America, comes in clutch. PPA offers you up to $15,000 worth of equipment insurance. And on top of that, you only pay a flat $350 deductible for full replacement. Or if you don't need it replaced, but you're just looking to get it repaired, they'll do that at a flat rate $50 deductible. But with PPA, you actually get a lot more than just that insurance. You also get access to loads of other resources like model release forms or cancellation letters or contract templates that you can compare or just take and use as your own. And all of these things are just more tools that are going to help your business grow and help keep your business safe. And if that wasn't enough, you also get access to their data recovery services. I've spent more in data recovery in my lifetime than I would care to admit. So whether you're looking to start off your business on the right foot or you're someone like me who's in a big transitional process and just want to make sure that you have your bases covered, go ahead and click the link down in the description to get a special offer on your member. Membership. Because, hey, if you're a photographer, especially an American photographer, you should start acting like a professional. Professional Photographers of America. That's not their slogan. And it shouldn't be. Thank you so much, PPA. You guys rock. We checked out a few different spaces in the city, but, like, honestly, there was not a whole lot available. And even the ones that we did find that we liked would still cost a lot of money to build it out. And even if we did that, it would only be a short-term solution until the eventual big picture goal of moving into Evil Empire was possible. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know what Evil Empire is, uh, here's a tag. Christoph made a whole video about it a couple years ago. It's the eventual home of our studios slash co-working space slash film rental studio. But um, yeah, it's, it's nowhere even near ready. Like not even a little bit close. So yeah, that's not going to work. But as the weeks came and went and we continued searching and planning and replanning and searching again, we were quickly running out of time and needed to solve that problem fast. So it is with great pride that I would like to introduce you to the future home of my YouTube channel, the inside of my camper van. Ta-da! Okay, no, that's that's not actually what's happening. Well, it's kind of what's happening. <laughs> At some point, Kristoff brought up the idea of us buying some old shipping containers and just having them delivered into this space that we could convert into our own offices. And um, spoiler alert, well, that's what we're doing. For the past month, we have spent every single day planning and building and learning how to do this because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but I also do not have the budget to pay someone to do it for me. So we've decided to make an entire series of videos on this YouTube channel following the journey from bringing in these shipping containers to renovating them and turning this space into the creative space of our dreams. No, Dizzy, I will stop shooting you. What? I will stop shooting you. And right now I am equal parts terrified and excited. I haven't felt this sense of like 
unease and yet joy about a creative project in a very, very long time. It feels good to be in way over my head. This is not gonna be a quick project and I expect it to evolve over time. So in the meantime, uh, this van is gonna be my studio until a couple of those shipping containers become the new home of the Jesse Driftwood and Friends YouTube channel, channels, I don't know. I'm really excited. I hope this goes well. I, I really hope this goes well. But if not, I could always get another job. There's still a lot of cleaning up to get done here over the next two days, but I don't want to film the whole thing. That's a lot of work. However, in the process of making this video, uh, Florence reminded me that like a year and a half ago, we started working on this reality TV episode of what it's like working in the chaos of this studio. And we had like six of us in here all wearing lav mics, cleaning the space and interviewing each other. And we never finished it. So. Here's a couple clips that they had put together a while back that just never got shared. Um, bonus clips, if you will. Get out of here. Dude, Josh gave his blood for these cookies. Here you go, here it comes. I, oh my God. This is the kind of cut that makes you die. The last time we properly cleaned the studio would be, Josh, when's the last time? We did a big clean at some point, right? I cleaned it two weeks ago, kind of. <laughs> the last time we cleaned this studio was Jesse's uh, 100K subscriber party. I was there for Jesse's 100K party. And we made it immaculate because Chris Howe was coming and I wanted to impress him. <laughs> I've seen Jesse's videos. That studio is always messy and when I walked in it was super clean. And I was like, Something, something's up. This, these are awesome. Management, cable management, we got hard drive management. Pens that I don't use. Josh, that drawer literally holds one hard drive. <laughs> it just finished. It does. It does. Oh, uh, wait. You forgot these cookies. Oh, we're throwing them out? You don't want these cookies? You don't want the cookies? Dude, Josh gave his blood for these They're, cookies. Yeah. <laughs> I gave my blood one? for those cookies. And he gave them to you. Anyway, you want me to throw them out? Throw it in the air and try and catch it in your mouth. No. <laughs> Throw it in the air and I'll catch it in my okay, mouth. Okay, okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh! That's actually amazing. Yeah. Throw them out? Yeah, throw them yeah, out. Yeah, throw them out. It's a mess, like a real mess. I have things tucked behind the TV stand right now. I've got stuff hidden in the desk. I've got stuff hidden underneath my desk. I just, my technique is just uh, out of sight, out of mind. I hope to find purpose in the course of cleaning the studio. <laughs> Who, who do you blame for the mess of this studio and the, and the consistent mess of this studio? It's, it's definitely Kristoff's fault. I do blame Kristoff. Kristoff, I would throw Kristoff under the bus. I knew you were going to ask this question. And honestly, I, I blame myself. What kind of example do you think that, that sets? <laughs> Oh, also, also, after years of begging this studio to fix our heat, uh, up to the very last day, they never did. So I'm still working here in my underwear because this place does not care about their tenants. Woohoo!